All right, fishy folks, I'm here with Fishman in his fish room. Why are you laughing? You're already laughing. All right, fishy folks, I'm here with Eric the Fishman in his fish room wearing a fantastic shirt. Where'd you get that shirt? I have no idea. <laughs> Found it somewhere. Michael's Fish Room, maybe. Michael's Fish Room. That's a good place, michaelsfishroom.com. Yep. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at your fish room. I'm just gonna, gonna show everyone how ginormous it is. There you go. I can almost touch all the tanks by standing in the middle. But there's a lot going on here, guys. There's a lot, there's some new stuff, which I should not show you. It's gonna be a surprise. All right. Upcoming videos. Let's talk about this really cool tank. Where did you buy this tank? <laughs> Don't buy tanks, I make them. What do you mean you make them? How can you make tanks this <laughs> cool? Are you some sort of do-it-yourselfer? Oh no, not one of those. <laughs> yes, one of those strange people. So you made all the tanks in your fisher? All of them. Are they all glass? Oh uh, yeah, I don't like acrylic for aquariums. You know, it's uh, old water as well as I like. Really? Yeah. I, I, I always thought acrylic was just as watertight as glass. Uh, the seams do not last as long. Uh, well, I'm talking like 10, 15 years kind of wow. thing. So they don't... I find they end up having leak issues, whereas these tanks will be good for 20 plus years. That's good to know. What do you got going on up here? A uh, red devil that I had to take out of the aquarium because the uh, uh, clients uh, actually got sold. Someone bought them out, and so I had to take out of the park. And he has got to find a new home now. That's probably going to be hard to rehome, isn't it? Uh, I've got a couple big tanks. All right. We'll fit in there. What's your biggest tank? Uh, a thousand gallons. And obviously that's not here. Where is it? <laughs> uh, that's at a client's. That's in a actually in a orthodontist office. So you build tanks for commercial businesses and maintain them? Yeah. That, that might be my dream job. Except in Canada in the winter when you have to drive in freezing rain and snow. Oh yeah. I was, I've been here in Ottawa, Canada for a week. And uh, when I got here it wasn't too bad. It was maybe in the 40s Fahrenheit. And then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, two days ago it was like, I don't know, 12 Fahrenheit with a 50 mile per hour wind. Yep. It was a little chilly. Springtime in the Great White North. Yeah, that's it. So what do you got in this tank? Uh, these are groves for clients. So this is a bunch of Africans and, uh, well, actually babies off of him. Uh, wow. They're, uh, when, when he was in uh, the aquarium where he had to come out of, they had they spawned a couple times. It's uh, like a 400 gallon tank, so he had enough space. And uh, yeah, the, those are a bunch of his babies. How, and, how big are these tanks? Uh, oh. They're seven feet by two feet by one, so seven by two is fourteen times seven point five. Someone can do the math there. Maybe <laughs> you can let me know. Oh, great! I'm, let me take my shoes off so I can calculate this for you. <laughs> what do you got going on down here besides a lot of horn work? Horn work, and oh, apparently trust me, they can never get rid of. Put a goldfish in there. Yeah, then they leave the plants. Yeah, I actually do want the horn work. <laughs> Uh, these are Johanna, the babies I read uh, last uh, spring and fall. They're growing up. Af Africans also? All Africans, yeah. And so I see there's a hang on the back filter over there. There's lots of rushing water here. And there's this really cool sump down here. Yep. What we got going on? All the tanks I like to set for the filter. So this whole rack is filtered by this system. Uh, the hang on back is a video I did for uh, fixing leaking filters, and I just left it there. <laughs> I'm going to see how long it's going to live. Okay. So, water comes from the black pipe? Uh, no, these are all these are returns. These right. are all where it's coming down into. Yep. And these here are where the pumps uh, pump it back into the tanks. And the filtration is in the box? Yep. It's a stack of wet dryer that needs cleaning apparently. Yeah, that happens. What's yeah. the big white pipe for? Well, I was originally testing out the leak crews for the cancer filters that I built. Uh, that was the test. Okay. I would stack media in there, see what medias work best, see if it reduce the nitrates. Uh, I found when you run them vertically, they tend to plug, so I stopped using it. 
All right, well, testing is good. Yep. And then there's an empty tank down low. I hate low tanks. Yeah, that makes two of us. Uh, I would put fish in there and I would forget about them. And then, like, six months later, I'd say, hey, is that oh, wait. In there? there's fish in there. Well, here's something you don't see every day in a Michael's Fish Room video a marine tank. Yeah. And uh, so you keep marine fish for your clients? I just quarantine, yeah. I don't, no breeding, it's too much work. <laughs> I'm lazy. And do you know how big these tanks are? Uh, um, the whole system is about 120 gallons, uh, not including two 50 gallon barrels. 50 gallon barrels full of live rock? Yep. Which you're curing for tanks, obviously. Yep. And that's how marine tanks are filtered, typically. Uh, actually, no. Uh, a lot of marine tanks, they use uh, a lot of very expensive equipment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And these lights are pretty interesting. Can I just go to a store and buy these? Uh, no. <laughs> you can go to uh, Ottawa LED and you can get them from Sam. Ottawa LED. Sam, I'm coming to visit you. Yeah. We uh, actually just ship those things, too. Really? Yeah. It's odd. Unlike fish and fish food, they can send you know, technical stuff back and forth across the border. No problem at all. Not fish and fish food. That's always difficult for us. And actually, I think it's getting worse. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard from a couple people it's getting worse. I mean, last summer, I got some wonderful fish off of you, and I liked them, and I bred them. <laughs> and you know what you were saying? That uh, we kind of cool that we could uh, get a few people up here, you ship them to me and I ship them to them? Yeah. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Well, the thing is I found after, the first time I went through the border, right. yeah, no problem with it. Second time, yeah, no problem with it. Thank you, crap. Ah. So the third time I went through the border, it's all right. This is the third time this guy's been back. So, pull over, we're gonna check it. We're gonna check. It was no problem, but they're, they're, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Especially if I'm starting to bring back boxes. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. Yeah. And then uh, when I tried to get some fish food recently, I, first order was fine. Second order, they stopped at the border, sent it back to them, said we need a complete fish, uh, sorry, a complete ingredient list, and then send that through. And they did, and then they sent it back again. Wow. I just sent it through. I can't buy fish food in the States. It's very strange. Which is kind of funny because uh, I use uh, uh, Northfin. Yeah, which is Canadian. Canadian, and they also have U.S. Yeah. subsidiaries. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I have no problem getting that. I also have no problem getting temperament. And so that's U.S. But you can't get other fish food. I can't get fish food from other people who are just trying to run a small business. I understand. So as we're speaking about fish I sent you, these are some of them, aren't they? Uh, those are uh, ones that are just going to be heading out to the aquarium. So that's my... Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's my uh, staging tank where I <laughs> okay. put fish in that are, are leaving soon. They're not of high enough quality to breed. Uh, so I will like, uh, put them in fish tanks. I don't like when I call, I don't like kill fish. I just uh, find them in a farm. <laughs> find them somewhere else to go. Find them. These are yours. These are the, those ones you're looking at now, those babies are yours. Those baby guppies are mine. Well, they're yours, but. Oh. And there's cool shrimp in there. It's, there are cherry shrimp everywhere i have to get into the shrimp hobby well I want shrimp. if you want shrimp cherry shrimp i would recommend as a starter because you can't kill them and they breed faster than guppies challenge accepted <laughs> there you go <laughs> i can kill anybody <laughs> so i've watched videos about this system before you built all this yourself right yeah and tell me about it uh, it's all sent over. Uh, when I do a water change, I just uh, put a hose in there and fill it up. I will unplug the pumps and let the system drain down. And then that overflow there, all that will drain down into the, the drain in the basement. Mm -hmm. And then I plug it all back in. Five minutes, it's all water change. So it's pretty much like my first system. Pretty much, except you had a, you, did you have a tank? No, you had the barrel, right? I had a sump, a 55 gallon sump. Right, so it would be a lot like that, except a follow up sump. Well, there's a sump, right? 
large uh, large plastic container? That was my second system. Oh, that was your second system. Oh, I guess I came into it a little late. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. My first system was essentially uh, central filtration. All the tanks were connected. 55 gallon for a sump. Filtration in that sump and air filters in the tanks. Ah. And then I got... I got you. I got, I got slammed and lost half of my fish yeah. and separated all the tanks. Yeah. But in, in order to do water changes, I had that holding barrel which was about 200 gallons yeah. and I would fill it up every day and drain it you know and, and overflow every day so what I'm going to be doing with this eventually yeah. yes yes we'll talk about that soon <laughs> all right so what kind of fish do you have in here the funny thing is this system yeah was all air driven initially all the tanks were separate none of them were drilled and I would clean them individually yeah that that's how my system is but I don't I don't clean them as often as I should. No one does. Well, because I change 10% water daily in every tank, so there's never a chance for nitrites to build up. Yeah. Nitrates to build up. Well, there's 23 tanks in the system. It's just... That's a day's work. <laughs> yeah, who wants to work a day in the fish room? Yeah. Especially after cleaning tanks all the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, these are all uh, mostly cichlids. Uh, some live bears, your guppies. Uh, those platies down there are from Angelo, or from Angelo's fish room. Ah. Uh, these are the zebra danias that I bred. And these are basically just bread and butter fish. That, uh, and your angels. Nice angels. Uh, one of them is actually from uh, Quebec City. As in are the fish to the right left. And the fish to the right? Yeah, these guys. These and are those are nice. And left. <laughs> and those are several. I'm just, like I said, just growing up the flies. And you breed bristle nose of Yep. Yeah. Well, my own bristle nose is... Uh, the thing is, is they are essential. They have them in pretty much every corridor. Yeah. And you know what a bristle nose costs. So, yeah, and in Canada you got to double the price. Yeah. Pretty much. We do that every time. <laughs> it's, it's a national pastime here. Make things expensive. So 23 tanks in the system, do you have an idea how many gallons? <sighs> I ask all these hard questions. I know. Well, each of these little ones is a 15 gallon tank, and each of the big ones is a 20 gallon tank. Now he's going to make me take my shoes off and do math. So, 8 times 15, 8 times 20. Wait, wait, 8 times 15 is 120. Yeah, 8 times 20 is 160. 160, so that's 280. And then another uh, 120. So, 400 gallons. Okay. See, that was easy. Uh oh. Look, folks, a broken tank. Yeah. I bet. Fishman, a broken tank. I bet Fishman can fix that, though. Upcoming and videos. There I was go. gonna say, if I was a betting man, I'd, I'd bet there's a video. And an empty shelf. Yep. What in the heck is going on here? Well, uh, you are ahead of the game because uh, this is gonna be a rack system I'm making for comparing. Everybody's, everyone's fish room you see is going to be like this, except it's going to have a slightly different uh, water change system. So I'm going to be able to compare this style with that style. So what you're saying is we have to watch and see there you and go. check out the comparison. That's it. All right. I'm not going to give anything away, but there is an empty barrel right here. Just uh, saying. No, it's just... How big are these cool tanks? Because I really like the size. Uh, these are one uh, two by two by ones. That's uh, three, four. <laughs> Better thirty-five gallon you, tanks. You think after I asked the first time, he would have already done the math in his head? Because knowing I'm going to ask again, but no, but I no, <laughs> I don't do math in my head. All right, let's pass the fancy camera and go over here and see what's in these little tanks. This is all live food. Yummy, not for us. Well, you can give it a go. Let me know how no, it works out for you. I'm, I'm okay. All right. So what's in here? Uh, actually, those are uh, self-cloning blue uh, crayfish. crayfish. They oh, yeah. I see them. Can't go in that system because they get everywhere. They'll self-clone themselves. No, I mean literally everywhere. And you know what they like to eat the most? Plants. Oh, okay. I, I used to have them in there. And it, it, they mowed it down. 
so they're in here. All right, and what about in this uh, tank with the leaves in it? Uh, both of the other two are just uh, uh, micro food, um, mostly paramecia, some free floating algae, and cyclops, and microworms. Microworms. And that's for your clients or for here? That's just for here. Okay. Just for babies. Microworms are probably the easiest live food to breed. There's no worms. I should, I should probably look into that. A little bit of smell. I yeah, that's a problem too. I do brine shrimp. Yeah, depends if you like the smell or not. I'm not gonna Maybe? smell it. <laughs> You're not gonna smell yeah, it. No, no, no. I've been uh, challenged to do the the lemons for leukemia, and I got a hard time doing that myself. So uh, yeah, yeah. I did that one. yeah, I know. I saw. Anything else you'd like to say, sir? Well, you can always just look that way for the people who don't watch fish videos. Oh, look! If you don't watch a fish video, you can see his workroom. He builds stuff. It's kind of dark in here, so hopefully it'll, it'll show up. But he built this fancy bandsaw, and he's got lots of cool tools. Yeah, and then they're really dark because there's no lights on. And the really dark lathe and drill press, but it's too dark. It's too dark. Yeah. That's all right. All the lights were moved over here so we can see what we're doing. That's it. I asked him to if there were any more. Before he put that light in, it was even darker than it is. And I'm like, don't you have lights down here? He's like, yeah, they're on. <laughs> I'd be hydro in Ottawa. <laughs> All right, fishy folks, check out Fishman. There will be a link in the description somewhere in this general area as well. And uh, go for. We haven't done any bloopers. We've done bloopers, oh, or have we? 